host play a game of real or fake with this popular seasonal flavor. Learn what fruity chocolate treat Anna and I tried this Tuesday. Robots are taking over the world. Find out how our hosts are feeling about this uprise today on The College Voice. Hello. Hello everyone! Happy Friday! How's everyone feeling about the warm weather in October? I, I like it. I'm hot. I'm loving it. I like I'm it. I'm not a fan. <laughs> I, wanna, I do. I want to wear my crew necks and sweaters yeah. and leggings. I like that, but I do not want winter. True. I, I just would like a happy medium, which is fall. Right. Yes. Yes. Exactly. Not getting that <laughs> Where's she at? <laughs> well, Kit Kat is back at it again with a new flavor, Fruity Kit Kat, aka Fruit Loop Kit Kat. But should they just stick to plain milk chocolate or was this a good move? You'll have to see your favorite taste tester's thoughts. Hello, Taste Test Tuesday viewers. Today we have the Fruity Cereal Kit Kat. Let me see, is this like Fruity Pebbles? Oh, no, it's like um, well, uh, Fruit Loops. Yeah, Fruit Loops. But obviously they can't say fruit loops because fruit loops must have not accepted the partnership. I don't know why you would deny a partnership <laughs> like this. But it's going to be a little melted because it's a hot one today, but that'll just make it extra. Oh, it's already oozing out of the top. So it's a pink, light pink color. Mm -hmm. It's pretty. With a little bit of... It smells like fruit loops. It does. It smells exactly like the box of fruit loops. White chocolate. Yeah. It's pretty good. Mm -hmm. Um, lots of flavor. Um, very like the this definitely has like some it tastes more like icing than like a white chocolate. Kinda reminds me of uh, frosted animal cookies too. Mm -hmm. But is that just the color or the flavor? I don't know. I guess a little bit of both. It's probably like the the middle part like with the the wafer and then the cream and the wafer is like flavored as well. Oh. I mean I definitely prefer a normal Kit Kat because this is like really sweet. Like mm -hmm. I don't think I could eat the whole thing and I wouldn't prefer to. Yeah. I don't think this is something I would crave. But if you like fruit loops and like fruity pebbles, you would like this because it tastes it literally exactly like it. And what I really like about it is the fact that it's different. There's no um, candy bar that's like cereal, but it definitely has a lot of flavor. Like it's not like it's just, oh, I can kind of taste it. Like you can definitely tell, you would definitely bite into this and think of a fruit. Yeah, yeah, like it doesn't just taste like white loop. chocolate. Like you get that fruity taste in mm -hmm. it. Um, yeah, I think this would be like a little too sweet and rich for me to eat like the whole thing and to like crave it more but like it tastes good yeah you know if you're just splitting a half with a friend <laughs> just like us it's a perfect little treat <laughs> so overall i'd probably give it a seven out of ten i'd probably give it an eight out of ten we'll take a break and watch taste test tuesday with, with a good cat <laughs> <laughs> bye so how do you guys feel about the Fruit Loop Kit Kat duo? I don't know how to feel, honestly. I feel like <laughs> I can, I can like imagine what it tastes like. Yes. And like I'm not like turned off. I'm just a stickler for plain old chocolate Kit Kat. Yes. Right. I feel mm -hmm. like you're messing with the original. Yeah, if it's broke, don't fix it type thing. Yeah. yeah. I appreciate the creativity, like Anna said. Like you've never seen like a cereal bar, chocolate bar, candy. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> right. One thing I love about Kit Kats is they're always doing some unique flavor that's limited edition. Like yesterday I just tried um 
the pumpkin pie Kit Kat, which was very good. That sounds good. It was yeah. very good. And uh, the thing is, too, when they market their new flavors, it tastes exactly like what they say it, it's yeah, going to be. Yeah, they've done a good job, like, actually making it taste like what it sh like what they market it to it, taste like. Exactly. And we have to give them okay. points for that. We love the consistency. <laughs> <laughs> but do you guys like that? Fruit Loop flavor, do you think? Because, I mean, it was kind of like white chocolate mixed with Fruit Loop. So, like, what do you think about that? I've had a white chocolate Kit Kat before, and it was fine. Um, and, I, you know, I've had Fruit Loops before, and they're all right. <laughs> 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 I, I feel like I would try it, and I wouldn't think it was nasty. I don't know if, if I would, like, consistently be like, oh, my gosh, I want a Fruit Loop <laughs> Kit Kat right now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. Oh, I would love if they had more, like, cereal-flavored candy yeah. bars. I feel like that would be so good. And they, maybe they do, and we just don't realize don't it. Like, they have, obviously, you know, Reese's cereal, Reese's bars, but... All right, now I say let's switch the combo up. Uh, I don't know about you, but I love watching productive routine videos. There's something so satisfying about watching others live out productive days. Over the summer, a trend became ultra popular on TikTok called That Girl, where females made videos of their productive and healthy school, work, and lifestyle routines. Clips of green juice, journal spreads, and expensive workout gear often dominate these videos. Some find this trend to be motivating and inspiring, while others find it to promote burnout, a rich lifestyle that many can't afford, and a glamorization of life that's just not realistic. So the College Voice wants to know, have you all seen these types of videos? If so, what's your take on them? Is it inspiring watch watching others be productive and having picture-perfect lifestyles, or is it draining and unrealistic? I know I just asked a bunch of questions, but first and foremost, have you guys seen like these That Girl videos on TikTok? I think so. Now yeah. it's kind of merging to like the cooking. Do you know what I'm I mean, it's about? part of it. You know, yeah. it's just like the productive, healthy, aesthetic yeah. lifestyle. I don't know how I feel because I feel like it is kind of very unrealistic to watch. Um, I just, I do think it kind of is like, well, I'll never be able to do that. But they are entertaining to watch. So that's why I watch them to be entertained, not motivated. Mm -hmm. So I do think they're entertaining. It's like aesthetically pleasing to watch. Mm -hmm. So, like, I don't think it's bad, but I don't see them as, I want to be like that, because yeah. I think that's when it becomes negative. Yeah, that's a good point. Katie and Alencia, what about you? Um, I'm going to be honest, I'm addicted to those videos. <laughs> <laughs> I watch them all the time, but like you guys were saying, it's more like an entertainment for me rather than I'm actually going to get up and go do it, because mm -hmm. I know myself and I know I'm not going to. Mm -hmm. And also, I think there is too much like glamorization with it as well, because I don't have the money to go buy the green juice every <laughs> day that they go get. Also, like, I have a strong belief that it's actually just nasty. Yeah. You can't convince me that green juice is it good. It tastes like grass. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's been a lot of criticism of the videos, but also a lot of people hopping on the trend. And like I said, I love watching people's productive routines because I'm someone that I, I have this constant need to be productive and to like be busy or else I just feel... Like, I'm not accomplishing anything, so watching other people's productive and healthy lifestyle routines, actually, it does motivate me and inspire me, um, you know, but there are some times where it's like, when you have your own little aesthetic spread, like, oh, my coffee looks perfect today, oh, my nails are done, like, you know, it feels, you get a sense of satisfaction from it, but life doesn't always look like that every yeah. day. There isn't perfect sunlight pouring in and making your <laughs> coffee look perfect, and you're not always, you know, doing a, a journal spread of, like, five things you're grateful for every day. That's just, you know, it's not the reality all the time, but I guess it is your intention with watching it. Are you watching it to be entertained? Are you watching it to be motivated? Or are you watching it and comparing yourself? Because that is kind of where the harm is. You know, I personally don't get upset by these vid videos, but I know some people look at it and they're like, I don't have, you know, this $100 workout gear to go do Pilates every morning, <laughs> you know? Like, so I, I really think it's your intention with watching it. So I was really curious. I do also think the people that are making these videos and that are actually popular because of them, they don't have a nine to five job. They aren't going to classes and have homework. This is their life. That's literally what they do to make money. So that is, un a lot of people aren't going to have that lifestyle. So I guess if you're watching it and understanding, oh, like, interesting, cool, good for her, that's fine. But when you're doing it and it's like, uh, I like, jealous or, like, 
I don't know, that type of thing, comparing, that's when it becomes bad. But I don't, why are people getting so offended by these videos? These people can do what they want. Good for them. They, good for them that they can accomplish these yeah. things and go to workout classes. Stop getting mad at everything that you can't do. Yeah, I, I agree with you, Anna. I feel your rage. Yes. I, yeah. I agree with you. Um, similar to what Bella said, too, like comparison is the thief of joy. You can't yes. enjoy the life that you have and the blessings that you have when you're constantly comparing it to what other people have. But um, I think there should be like a medium, like if you can watch it and be inspired. And be like, oh, like I want to live like this. I want to be the type of girl who wakes up and you know makes her avocado toast in the morning right. and goes to the gym. Like that's great. That's that's great. Yeah. yeah that's <laughs> wrong with that. But also too, like it's nothing wrong. Like Bella said, not Bella. Anna, you said like the women they do this for a living. They don't always have to have the consciousness of oh, well, I'm not being relatable. You don't always have to be relatable when it's your life. Right. Like, that's very true. And like. You should be proud of them. Yeah. Like, I'm proud of these girls. Like, good for you. Good you for know, you. that's not me. I'm way too ADD to be <laughs> that organized and doing that every day. But I think the people who get bitter about it are just jealous yeah, in general. Yeah, they're doing, not doing enough in their own life. Right. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, there, and there are True. some people that have started to make these videos, and they do focus on just the mundane, everyday look. Like, they're not focused on having perfect sunlight in every shot and having a perfect bathroom with all their skincare laid out. Like, I've seen so many videos where people are just like this is exactly how my morning looks and all the comments are like thank you for actually showing what everyone else's looks like so I was just very curious <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well that's our view on this TikTok trend but the college voice loves to follow all the fall trends including pumpkin spice our host Hayden is hosting a little game show to test our cast on their knowledge of pumpkin spice when the college voice returns in 60 seconds decision is that I'm going to be the voice. I am, you know, an ex-theater major. Whatever, an ex-theater major. I am a theater I major. I have a theater performance minor. Mine is just as important. I bring the entertainment okay. to this show, okay. so go ahead. Obviously, it should be me, because ain't nobody as fierce as I am. Oh, no, 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 no. It should be me, because I'm a freshman. And obviously, freshmen are more important, right? No, it should be us, because we're the oldest. Exactly. And we have Andy Joe. Hello. Everybody wait. The only voice that should end this commercial is the College Voice, Fridays at 2 p.m. Now say it with me. Watch the College Voice on Fridays at 2 p.m. We all enjoy a good pumpkin spice latte, or maybe a pumpkin roll, or a pumpkin cheesecake. But when does it become too much pumpkin? Today we find out in a game where we test the host's knowledge of real or fake pumpkin spice products. All right, are you guys ready over there? Are you excited? I'm, I'm very ready. I don't All right. Know, you got some serious competition, Joe. <laughs> I probably do. So our first product that we have is pumpkin spice chicken sausage. Is this real or fake? I'm gonna say that's real. That actually sounds kind of good. Like a sweet, like almost like maple syrup and bacon, you know? Really? Like, I, can, I, can see, I can see it, like a little cinnamony sausage. That sounds so fake. Well, you are correct. That is real. I knew it. I knew but that's, it. that's gross. That's, mm, mm Okay. Now we have pumpkin spice pickles. Real or fake? <coughs> Who hit the buzzer? I can't see. Joe did. Joe okay, did. Joe, what's your answer? I say it sounds fake, to be honest, because I've never heard of, like, pumpkin spice pickles I before. am once again going to say it sounds real, especially because, like, I could see them maybe adding, like, some cinnamon to the vinegar they marinate the pickles in. So I think, I'm gonna say real again. The answer is it is real. Oh. That's another one that's real. They're called pump, pump pickles? Pump pickles? I, I actually kind of like that, that little alliteration. I have no idea. Okay, so the next one we have is pumpkin spice toothpaste. That's real, that's real. Not a doubt in my mind. I bet that tastes good too. Like peanut butter toothpaste for dogs. You know what I mean? Apparently there is a doubt in your mind because that is fake. That, no, that one's not real. Well, thanks for the idea, because I will be stealing that one. <laughs> there so. you go, million dollar idea. All right, so the next one is pumpkin spice Listerine strips. You know those little like mouth strips for the mouthwash that you like pop in really quick? They still is have there, those? Yeah, is there a pumpkin one though? False, no, no there is not. I say it's real though. Really? It could sound real. I just don't think that would like clean your mouth. And I think that's the whole point of them, you know? That one is fake. That one's also another faker. All right, so this one. Jump. 
little bit, we're stepping out of the food here again. This one is deodorant, pumpkin spice deodorant. Is this one real? Um, I'm gonna say real, cause like I can just imagine like an Old Spice pumpkin spice deodorant. I really Fair. think that one, that one would hit off. Fair, well I'll that one yes. is, that one's real but it's not by Old Spice, it is by Native. It is their pumpkin Ooh. spice latte scent. They've been coming out with weird ones. Like for Christmas, they also do like uh, like peppermint. Okay. Don't know why. Okay. Yeah. Wow, Old Spice, get on that. Right? That All right, could be so their next brand. we have pumpkin spice LaCroix, the water, like the fizzy water. What do we think? What do we think? I say that sounds fake, to be honest. So I, I also it's say fake. fake. That I'm is gonna... fake. You guys are right. Good job, that one was fake. All right, ready for the next one? This one's a weird one. Pumpkin spice Slim Jims. I think I got it. I think yeah, I got it. I think first. it was you. I'm gonna say that one is once again real because just like the sausage isn't Slim Jim sausage. Yeah. Uh, pumpkin sausage. I think well, that's a yeah, thing. Yeah. So and believing on your logic of like sausages being pumpkin spice, then yeah, I could also believe yeah. a Slim Jim could be pu pumpkin spice. So. That one is fake. Really? That's not real. Yeah. It's okay, not a real but thing. I, there's most definitely like a Slim Jim like sausage thing out there. So maybe just like not the brand Slim Jim. I'm gonna yeah. say I got that right. There though. might be. You never know. You never know. <laughs> All right, so our final one for this game is pumpkin spice gum. What do we think? I say it's real, uh, honestly, because there are a bunch of like weird flavors of gum almost. That's true. That's I'm gonna true. say so. it's not real, but I know extra gum it does have like a pumpkin pie, so I feel like they wouldn't make a pumpkin spice too. But I feel it could be, because like, if pumpkin pie, then why not pumpkin spice? Because I think they're different. I'm gonna say no. It's funny you say that because it is real and it is extra gum who has the pumpkin spice flavor gum. <laughs> you know, I was close. I was. I got the brand. Do you I get like close? That was, do I get pumpkin spice points for that? Sure. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Good. Yeah. That seemed like a tie. All right. Well, as much as I love pumpkin spice and winning, I think I like science and technology a bit more. As science and technology continue to rapidly advance, so do the capabilities of artificial intelligence. It seems like there are no limits to what these AIs can do. With just the Hey Siri, Hey Google, or an Alexa, you can play your favorite song, send your mom a text, turn lights on or off, or even video chat your dog. So, how do we feel about these virtual assistants and companions? Are they cool or creepy? Okay, well, personally, I've been really into AI movies like Ex Machina or I Am Mother. Have you guys heard of any of those? I have heard of Ex Machina. I haven't. I'm not an AI Ooh. person. I think it's weird. I okay. don't know what AI. I thought this conversation was about Alexa. Ale <laughs> no, no, <laughs> I mean, Alexa yeah. is an she AI. She counts as it, but. She's like a virtual companion. But do you think she's cool or creepy? Both. Like, Both? I think she can be useful, but I also think it's, like, scary how, like, you'll just be having conversation if I even mention Alexa like the light turns on it's yeah. like so you were listening that right. the entire time and I'm being recorded the entire time yeah I think I think it's cool like the idea I think for some people who maybe are a little bit lonely it'd be nice to have a friend but the fact that like we're turning these people we're giving them like a personality you know like Alexa and Siri they are not the same they are not the same they are two very distinct like personalities yeah. team team Alexa or team Siri I'm team Siri. Team I, Siri. I think I'm Siri's th better, and I've also had very bad like interactions with Alexa. One Joe? time, I was with a friend. She started playing Anaconda at midnight at oh. for no reason. Oh. No reason. Anaconda. Siri knows the Nicki boss. Minaj. I don't know she? if this is true, but I was. I think it was on TikTok, of mm. course. But I saw something that's like it was like they used Alexa to solve like a crime. Like, oh, it's you know what? Recorded. I think exactly. I heard about that because like, yeah. you know those like ring doorbells. Apparently, in, like the latest terms and condition, it said like they can keep like all of that footage mm -hmm. now and like use it for criminal evidence. Which yeah. that actually you know? sounds very innovative, honestly. I mean, yeah. being yeah. able to like, if like someone was trying to break into your house and something like you have like that footage and it can actually like be used to help like identify like the suspect. It sounds really cool. Yeah, but also it's like scary because I feel it like is. it's not talked about enough. Like yeah. people don't realize the power that these devices hold on our life. Yeah, exactly. Like, especially oh, yeah. like even with the new like iOS updates that are constantly coming out. Like, do any of you actually read them? No. Oh no, I just like skip I know straight to I accept. don't, and like some I know we, people we that probably don't should. update their phones. Like, because yeah. I know for a fact they probably say like they can listen to certain things or like have certain capabilities. But There's, at the same time, yeah. I do think like. They don't need to listen just because of stuff like cookies and that. Yeah. But Fair. going back to AIs, um, how do you guys feel about the fact that you can like change their voice? That is like creepy to me. <laughs> I mean, I think it's so cool, but it's also very dangerous. I personally like the British one. I think his name's uh, Samuel. Is it? 
I don't know, to be honest, but I think he's cool. There's a lot friends. of new like innovations with, you know, changing the voice and so many different things that we're not paying attention with. You know, we've seen like a couple of like things here and there about people being able to recreate like their own voice or yeah. somebody they know's oh, yeah. voice or even like a celebrity or like a political leader's voice or even face. You know, that's stuff that we're not talking about that's like that's happening and that's really scary. Like yeah. that's a problem. I could literally <laughs> yeah. make you say whatever I want by right. just having like a few clips like of your, I could use right. this show. Exactly. I remember YouTube. that. Check like, it out. When that <laughs> TikTok update came out, do you guys like remember how like the voice uh, the reading voice changed? People were like doing that prank where it's like, oh my gosh, look who my TikTok voice is. Yeah, it's it's honestly pretty creepy at some points. Yeah. Like, it's it's innovative, but at the same time, it's just really creepy. I just think we need mm -hmm. to get away from like these AIs are our friends because they're like not human, and that's like, I think that's breaching dangerous territory for like mental health wise. You know, oh. relying too much on this like technology. You know what I mean? Like social media already does like enough harm. It does do good, but like you know what I'm getting at? Yeah, I get you. Yeah. Honestly, I think yeah. I just think I mean w the more years that go by, we're just becoming more of like. Like, there's technology out there that we don't even know about mm -hmm. that is can be, like, extremely detrimental to yeah. our society, yeah, I yeah. believe. So I just, I, I don't know how I feel about it. Yeah, I was just trying to look it up to see if I could find the name, but there's, like, a movie coming out right now for kids about for ki a kid with his, like, best friend robot who's, like, oh. an AI robot. It's like Siri, but, like, in a form. And the thing is, they're so accessible. Like... I don't realize it, but they sell tons of like little AI robots right on like Amazon for like a hundred bucks. Yeah. Yeah. Like uh, there's like this one little tiny one, or even like there's more common ones that we don't like really think about. Like I know on OSU's campus they have those delivery like mm -hmm. yeah. DoorDash bots yeah. that people like love to mess with, but like they're they have cameras and they like run over people. There was that challenge of trying to get it to run over you. <laughs> what? So like I think yeah. those are kind of cool. I'm not gonna lie. Those, those, yeah, are, those are nice. Those I are feel like that cool. can't be yeah. very dangerous. Mm -hmm. Like what's it gonna do that can affect? Like I just feel like that's kind of right. cool to have around. But yeah, is it? I, so yeah. I want to know: Is it towing the line of like you know where they're saying robots are taking over? Is that another thing that's like are they taking more jobs? Because we're starting to mm -hmm. see that happen. Where like you know there's factories that are just robots and mm -hmm. they're taking over. So it's like is that what's actually happening? Yeah. See, like for me, <laughs> I, I think so. I think like that. I think we should be able to have that robot because like why wouldn't we want things to be efficient? But at the same time, I don't think we have like enough like laws and structure in place to ensure that people are still making like enough money while mm -hmm. that's are we turning yeah. into wally no we honestly you know, are. Uh, that's a great that's a great point <laughs> like when are we going to get to mars <laughs> you know <laughs> like I just wally get there. like that that's right. what happens yeah. in the movie well that's enough talk about technology taking over you know what i could use a break find out how our hosts are spending their fall break when the college voice returns in 60 seconds I mean, I think the obvious decision is that I'm going to be the voice. I am, you know, an ex-theater major. Whatever, an ex-theater major. I am a theater I major. I have a theater performance. Mine or mine is just as important. I bring the entertainment okay. to this show, okay. so go ahead. Obviously, it should be me, because ain't nobody as fierce as I am. Oh, no, 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 no. It should be me, because I'm a freshman. And obviously, freshmen are more important, right? <laughs> No, it should be us because we're the oldest. Exactly. And we have Andy Joe. Hello. Everybody wait. The only voice that should end this commercial is the college voice, Fridays at 2 p.m. Now say it with me. Watch the college voice on Fridays at 2 p.m. While college is fun and a great way to branch out and find yourself, it can get quite stressful. So when it finally comes time for a seasonal break, it means relaxation and breaking free from stress and getting back to yourself. But how exactly do you do that? And how do you bounce back and be ready to come back to college? Let's, let's talk about that. So what do you guys think? Well, I think it's important that when you do go home, 
for the college boys. Or for, <laughs> the, for the college boys. <laughs> okay, um, try again. <laughs> when you go home, it's important to treat yourself right and like get some good home cooked meals while you're home. Definitely. Like, mm -hmm. mom, make me spaghetti, please. <laughs> and also, Another big thing that I can't do here, which makes me so sad, is take a bath. I uh, love baths, but I can't do that in my little shower. Mm -hmm. right. So I like to go home and take a bath, and that's kind of how I decompress and relax when yeah. I come home from college. Yeah, when you like go home, you start to appreciate the very small things that you mm -hmm. never that you took for granted while you were home. Like I go home, and so I live in my sorority house here, so I can't light candles. So oh, when I go really? home, first <laughs> thing I do, get my Bath and Body Works three wick. I'm like. Doop, doop, <laughs> the whole house is smelling like pumpkin carving <laughs> in two seconds. So that's like always my first thing I do. But just having your own space, mm -hmm. the home cooked meals. My dad is the best chef ever. He's always whipping something up. So I'm excited for that. Yeah. And I also take time to cleanse my crystals when I'm home too. There you go. Smart. Smart. For me though, I would say something that I like really look forward to and it's so small but I love it is going home to see my pets. Yes. You know, we, you like, we don't have pets here, so having We have Andy Joe. We have Andy Joe. <laughs> that is a plus. Andy Joe's a big plus. But having to like be able to go home and seeing like our own pets, it's it's the greatest thing ever. It's so great. I love it so much. Yeah, sometimes I feel bad when I walk in the house, like the first thing I say hi to is my dog <laughs> and my parents are like, hey girl. I'm like, hi Bella, like screaming at my dog. But I mean, there is just like something, because we don't see pets a lot around yeah. here unless we're talking about Andy Joe. Andy Joe's great. Um, but I, like you said, it's such a small thing, mm -hmm. like you being excited for that. But those are the things that end up being the most important and the yeah. things that are so comforting Absolutely. is taking advantage of those small times. And every time I go home, I go home pretty frequently. I'm just from Youngstown, which is yeah. a little under an hour away. But it's always filled with so much family time for me, which is yeah. very restorative because I'm fortunate to be very close with my family. And last week, actually, we had a 100th birthday party for my great grandma. Aww. Gigi is turning 100 <laughs> years Gigi. old on October 13th, so everyone wish Gigi a happy <laughs> birthday. Happy birthday, Gigi! Happy birthday, Gigi! <laughs> <laughs> so we're gonna celebrate her over fall break, and my brother is turning 18, so happy birthday, Ethan. Yeah. My niece is, you said October 13th, right? Yeah. My niece is also gonna be two, and my brother is gonna be 29. On that day too. Oh, wow, my niece just turned two on That's Monday. That's so cute. And speaking of birthdays, my 21st birthday is during fall break, and I'm just like, oh my oh gosh! Look at that. So Yay. it's the perfect time to go home. There's, yeah, it's the perfect time to go home. There's and a I, reason right there. Yes. Yeah, I don't go home super often. It's only two hours, but I'm just so busy. I don't get the time to go home as much as I like, and it takes a toll on me because I'm so close to my family and my siblings and my cousins, and so um, that's just my main focus when I go home. Mm -hmm. And another thing, like. Um, going to like the little spots around town that I love that I like places that I can't get in Kent like ice cream shops like yes. malls are a big mm -hmm. one because the malls in this area <laughs> not <laughs> it. Um, yes yeah, so all of just the things in the places that I love back home that mm -hmm. just make me feel you know home right yeah. and then when you actually come back to college what are some of your tactics to kind of get back into gear and like shifting back to well, your schedule. I always make sure that I really like clean my room before I leave. And that's just that's smart. for yeah. any trip. So when I come back, I'm not just like bagged down. Cause like, you're already sad that you had to, you know, go back, but you right. want to make sure your place is like clean and ready to like be, you know, a space where you can be productive. So yeah. make sure I clean before I leave. So once I come back, yeah. mm -hmm. the that's energy super is smart. Yeah, yeah, I definitely think one of the big things is like we've talked about before is, and you know, we have as our, one of our points is writing in a planner. A planner is huge for me because I'm definitely the kind of person that's like, well, I have a schedule, but that schedule doesn't tell me what I need to do after class or what's coming up for class or anything. So having my planner and writing down everything in there is really helping me, especially in college, because you know our schedules are so different. They're not as laid out as it was in high school. So to have that planner, it really helps. Yeah, I write every single thing <laughs> in my planner. If you guys saw my planner, You'd be like, one, how do you function? But two, like, you probably <laughs> over function because it writes out everything to the point where it's very helpful because I know what I have to do, but mm -hmm. it's also kind of stressful at the same time. I just know I'm ready for a break. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Sounds good. Well, that's all we have for you today. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, The College Voice, and follow us on Instagram at The College Voice underscore KSU. But TV2 is not quite finished yet. Stick around for an upcoming episode of Kent Cora tonight at 8 p.m. For all of your local news, stay tuned for your TV2 newscast at 6 p.m. And we'll see you all next week.
music show just got even better. We are now online serving all the needs of your favorite music media. You can check out our site for editorials and reviews from our writing staff featuring headline news and stellar illustrations from our design team. In the mood for your favorite artists? Check out links to our past episodes on this new and brilliant site. We are now one click away at kentcoretv2.com. We are Kent Core. We are music-driven media.